I wanted to thank you all again for your interest in the University of Cincinnati's Early Childhood Education Birth to Age 5 online programs. Um, it's very nice to meet you. My name is Allison Kraling, and I am an Enrollment Services Advisor here at UC Online, I'm specializing in the ECE programs. So tonight, I am joined by a few other people. Kathleen Bryan, our Program Coordinator and Associate Professor for the UC Early Childhood Education programs, as well as Shamel Baxter, Senior Scholarship Counselor, um, for the Ohio Child Care Resource and Referral Association, also known as OCRA, if you've seen that. And she'll be able to discuss the Teach Ohio Early Childhood Scholarship for you later in the presentation. Um, so we're so glad to have you here with us tonight while we review the highlights and detailed information about both of our early childhood education programs. So if you do have any questions, which I'm sure some will pop up throughout this evening, um, just remember there are two different ways that you can go about asking your question. We do have a Q&A box set up that you can input any questions that you have and just type it out. You also can go ahead and raise your hand if you feel more comfortable verbally asking your question. Um, there's a little raise hand button and we'll try and um, make sure we get to you sort of as we go. But of course, at the very end, we will also leave time for questions too. All right, so just a little bit of the agenda and breakdown of what we'll be covering tonight. Um, some program highlights, where you can start in the program. We're gonna overview the curriculum for both programs as well. I'll go over the admissions requirements and the application process to help you with that. Um, we'll go over the important deadlines to remember, tuition cost, financial aid, the OCRA opportunities with scholarships, and then of course at the end leave time for any questions that you might have. So we're going to get started first with a short video um, that we really always enjoy sharing with our current and prospective students. So before we jump into any other details, we're going to just let you know about Marcy Mason, a recent graduate of our uh, Early Childhood Education Bachelor's Program. Marcy was very nervous about going back to school, but through hard work and her determination, um, she was able to not only finish out the associates program, but also the bachelor's program as well at, in our program at UC Online. So I want to go ahead and share her story with you. I think the question that's on every teacher's mind is, will I be remembered? My profession in childcare entitled me to prepare an environment for nurturing and learning for the children. As a child, I always played school, but I always felt that I always wanted to be a teacher. It can be very challenging, especially with behaviors or, you know, one of the words that we're using now is trauma. They can't give you the words to tell you what I'm experiencing. So it's kind of like a guessing game to help us you know, help them. I chose to go to University of Cincinnati online to achieve my associate degree in early childhood education. I think the fear of going back to school is, what if I fail? As I reflect on my journey, UC was the only option that I had that really helped me grow in getting what I needed to become the teacher that I am. The online platform was super easy to use. It was very explainable in my terms. The online platform also allowed me to connect with other students so you don't feel alone, you know, for what you're going through. The advisor that I had, she really pushed me. I've cried with her. She really was a very big supporter. Once I received my associate, there was no question about going on for, for my bachelor's, again, with UC. I guess when I look back on my career, I'm most proud of being able to be a part of a child's life at the beginning and seeing them grow as an adult, because you learn from them as well. Who is that? Look how big you are. I felt like yeah. I also grew up right along with the children.
All right, so Marcy is just one of the many success stories that we have in our programs. So of course, we would love for you to be the next success as well. All right, so UC Online is very proud to provide our start to graduation support system from the very first moment that you think about looking into our program all the way through graduation. So we just wanted to share a couple of the people that you will have supporting you all throughout your entire program duration. Um, so you're gonna start off with um, myself and my team as enrollment services advisors. We're there to support you from the very first time that you put in that inquiry or send that email asking about our program and inquiring about how it works and um, some background information um, through uh, filling out your application, getting your transcripts in, getting all of that approved and good to go, and then confirming your spot um, once you would be admitted in the program. So the next person that you're gonna have supporting you is your a student success coordinator. And um, they are going to make sure that you are um, set up first with a welcome call, getting everything ready for semester reg registration, whatever semester you're enrolling in, all the way through graduation. So they don't just start with your first term and then forget about you. They're gonna be your advocate all the way through from start to finish. You can always reach out to them and ask questions about what's going on. If you have concerns, if you need help and support, um, they're gonna make sure that you are successful all throughout the program. You're also gonna have um, the typical person you hear about, which is your academic advisor. They're also gonna be able to assist you in understanding of all the program details and requirements that you need as far as the policies, the course schedules, um, help you map out a plan if you need to adjust your course schedule at all, um, making sure that they're meeting up with your educational goals. And then of course, um, all of your program faculty, in including Kathleen, um, they're always gonna make sure that they're able to support you and help answer questions. Um, if you wanna communicate with them on the side, a lot of them will have um, online office hours to check in. Um, they're very accessible um, to be able to chat with, even though this is an online program, you're, you're still very much gonna feel that support too as well. Just a little bit. All right, so a very popular question that we get asked is, oh gosh, did I click on the next slide? I'm so sorry. A very popular question that we get asked is, how long is it this gonna take me to complete? Um, of course, that is a very case-by-case -case situation. Every student is different. Um, everybody has sort of factor factors, underlying things um, in their own lives that might um, cause the finishing time to be a little different. And the amount of time can kind of change a little bit depending on the goals and the needs of what you need and if you need to go you know part-time versus full-time so take that into consideration when we're sort of working with you to build your your schedule but just a couple of really important things to remember as far as um, timeline this is a hundred percent online program you're never going to be required to come into uc's campus for any of your program um, courses um, so we do have students that are enrolling that are out, way outside of Cincinnati um, that aren't able to drive in, but totally okay to take the courses. It's not gonna affect them or be any different for them. Um, the asynchronous format is also something that we really um, are happy to, to support our students with, just because we do have sometimes students on different time zones. They might not be able to all, um, you know, log into a Wednesday evening class at 6 p.m. That's not really how it's designed. We wanna make sure that we're meeting you where you are um, able to help you with whatever you need. That means that um, you will get, you know, your schedule and your assignments ahead of time, weekly, bi-weekly. You obviously kind of work out morning, evenings, weekends when you can get that done, um, but you do not have to worry about live lectures logging in throughout the week. Another great thing we love to offer is that the fact that you have three times throughout the year that you can start. Um, so we do have a spring, a summer, and a fall semester that you can enroll in. Um, so you don't feel like you have to necessarily start at a specific time, whatever works best for you. And each semester is going to follow the normal length that you hear about um, in other schools as well. So about that 13 to 15 week, week length in all of your courses. Um, we do also offer part-time versus full-time options. 
Um, so if it works better for you, if you're very busy, if you've got a um, you know, busy work schedule, family, all kinds of other things going on, we do highly suggest starting off as a part-time student, maybe taking somewhere between six to nine credit hours. Um, and then if you um, think you can kind of maybe handle a little bit more, obviously you're going to talk this through with your student success coordinator and your academic advisor, but you can also have the full-time option too. So you're going to take about 12 or more credit hours. But I would say most of our, on average, ECE students do enroll in part-time um, just because a lot of our students, if not the majority of them, are working at least part-time, full-time jobs as well. We want to make sure that you're successful. We want to make sure that you're not too overwhelmed. Um, so we do suggest if you kind of feel a little iffy, definitely start out as a part-time student for sure. And we did want to share some great accolades um, that we have achieved, of course, with the help of um, Kathleen um, throughout the last couple of years. We have been awarded um, Best Online Bachelor's Programs for our ECE program. Um, we also were a Best Online College at UC Online. Um, we have been uh, awarded the Best Online Bachelor's in specifically Early Childhood Education. Um, and then also the Top Associate Program in Early Childhood Education as well. So in the, with keeping in that in mind, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to Kathleen. Um, she is our program coordinator in the Early Childhood Education Program and associate prof, uh, professor. Um, and she, we wanted to make sure that she's able to talk to you and talk to you about all the different great things that you're gonna get along with this program and what she's um, kind of taking part in as well. Um, she's led study abroad trips for our ECE students um, in our nature-based learning programs in different countries as well. So I'm going to let Kathleen share some information as well. Allison, thank you so much. And thank you all for being here tonight. I do see a couple of questions uh, in the chat that I will answer in a few minutes. I want to first introduce you to the concept that this this program offers two different degrees, an associate degree and a bachelor degree. The associate is an associate of applied science or an AAS degree in early childhood education. It is 20 courses and all of our courses are three credit hours. So that is a total of 60 semester credit hours. Our associate degree is um, eligible for the Ohio Teach Early Childhood Scholarship. Uh, you must live in Ohio to be even considered for that scholarship. At the University of Cincinnati, they realized that in order for our associate degree to be competitive financially, they automatically apply a, a scholarship to everyone that starts uh, taking courses at the associate degree level. And then of course, federal financial aid is eligible for the AAS degree. Our bachelor degree, uh, it's a bachelor of science. So a BS in early childhood, which spans the ages of birth through age five. It is 40 courses, 40 times three, three credit hours for each course. It's 120 credit hours. You'll hear in a couple slides later that the associate degree uh, makes it possible for you to be already halfway to the bachelor degree. The bachelor degree is al also eligible for the Teach o Ohio Early Childhood Scholarship and federal financial aid is also available for the bachelor degree. But I want to reassure you that th we are um, very aggressive in creating articulation partners with other institutions so that if you obtain an associate degree elsewhere or you started a bachelor degree elsewhere, we have many articulation partners so that we can offer you as many transfer credits as possible. Within both of these degrees, there are four different sub plans. So the degree would be early childhood, associate degree in early childhood. And then you have an option of four different sub plans, preschool, infant toddler, administrative, and our new nature-based early learning. You'll hear about this in a few more slides. Hi, Kathleen. This is your second interpreter, Crystal. I am trying to share screen, but I don't have access so that I can relieve Danielle. Hold on. Let me give you access. One second. Thank you. All right. You should have access now.
Welcome, Crystal. So if you are interested in starting in the associate degree, I am going to just go down the left side of this slide. Uh, you need to have a high school diploma or a GED in order to apply for the associate degree. No ACT or SAT scores are required. And there's open admission if you're transferring from another college or institution. Remember that I just told you that there is that associate degree scholarship that the University of Cincinnati automatically applies to your tuition. All of these courses apply directly to the bachelor degree. And um, I saw a question just pop up. If you have a CDA certificate, a valid CDA certificate from anywhere, you will be able to receive six credit hours in the associate degree. And again, as a reminder, it, this is eligible for the TEACH scholarship. For the bachelor degree on the right side of the column, you need, if you're coming in and transferring in from another institution, you earned an associate degree elsewhere, you must have a 2.5 GPA or also a 2.5 GPA if you earned your associate degree at UC and want to continue on to the bachelor degree. Still, there's no ACT or SAT scores required. And as a reminder, the TEACH scholarship is available and you are able to bring up to 90 credits from another institution if, let's say, you started a whole bachelor program elsewhere that we will be able to apply up to 90 credits towards this degree. I'm going to pause real quick and see if I missed anything. Um, I saw a question early on about uh, if you wanted to get a student ID um, yes, you would uh, be able to have that mailed out to you. Uh, once you are a student at the University of Cincinnati, you are eligible for a student ID, which gets you discounts on many places that would be mailed to you. And um, if, you if you complete an associate degree anywhere, you would um, enroll as a new University of Cincinnati student, but our enrollment service uh, specialists would help you um, figure out how to apply and make sure you have all the documentation for that. I think I captured them all, Allison. I'll uh, go on to the yeah. next slide. Yeah, sounds good. So I mentioned that there's four sub plans. Again, your final degree is going to be either an associate degree in early childhood or a bachelor degree in early childhood. But your diploma will have what area of specialty you have chosen. So the most... Uh, um, probably popular one, most common one, is having a subplan, especially in the associate degree, a subplan that is for preschool. Remember, there are 20 courses in the associate degree. Five of those specific courses would be specific to preschool if you're someone that's interested in working with preschoolers or are already working with um, preschoolers. Um, this is Good for anyone interested in being a lead teacher, an assistant teacher, in a child care center, Head Start, private preschool. Sometimes someone that is a curriculum supervisor uh, or a preschool supervisor also might be interested in this sub plan. Um, the other 15 courses of the 20 are the same, regardless of what sub plan you're in, but these are the five specific courses. The first three here are um, what we call our methods courses, helping you uh, understand how to teach these concepts. And then there are two semesters worth of practicum courses where you are doing um, your student teaching in a preschool classroom. The first course is preparing you for the second course, the internship course, and that is the specific course that leads to Ohio's pre-kindergarten associate license if you're interested in that. The administration subplan is ideal for anyone who is interested in being an administrator in a child care center, again, a head start. Uh, this is ideally for someone that is working as a family child care provider in a type A or type B home. Um, this subplan does cover all the aspects of what it takes to own and operate an early childhood program, and it doesn't require a specific practicum. Uh, throughout several of these courses, you will be shadowing other administrators virtually or in person if you choose. Again, there's the, the there's 15 courses that are the same regardless of the subplan, but if you choose the administration subplan, 
these are the five courses that would set you apart that would give you the sub plan in administration. The third sub plan is an infant toddler sub plan, ideally for someone that is a lead or assistant teacher in an infant or toddler classroom. Again, child care center, early head start. Um, we have a lot of students that are working in an early head start that are wanting to be a lead teacher, and this would be a great sub plan for them. Again, you, there's other roles and opportunities. Um, Allison, can you back up one slide, please? There you so, go. So not trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, so again, there's lots of other roles and opportunities in early childhood that having specialization in some of this content would help you if you were supervising or maybe a curriculum specialist. Um, this one, again, same 15 courses that are the same no matter the sub plan, but these are the five unique ones that are unique to the infant and toddler curriculum, ending with one practicum course. So you would just have one semester that you would be completing the infant and toddler practicum. And the last slide that Allison's very excited to share, <laughs> because I am too, is our newest sub plan. And it is our nature-based early learning. Uh, this is a sub plan that, again, you have the foundation in early childhood education. That's what the degree will be in but you're specializing in courses that would encourage children to be outside every day, great parts of um, each day. And there are actually six specific courses in this nature-based early learning um, sub plan. Uh, many students that choose this sub plan might be working in, at a nature-based uh, nature preschool. They might be working in a zoo school or a, a museum, a children's museum, where having some of this understanding um, would be helpful. It's also very valuable for people that are in just um, regular preschools or head starts that are wanting to green up their existing playgrounds and play spaces. Um, there has been quite an emphasis in nature-based early learning in the last probably five to 10 years in the United States. It's been very popular in other countries for many, many, many years. Um, so uh, we're very excited about this, and um, there is a uh, this this course here, interpreting nature with young children. That is the practicum course that's included in this sub plan. I'm going to pause and check the um, chat real quick. Um, we had a question about the CDA. Can it be applied to the bachelor's program? So they only connect to the associate degree courses. So the courses that you would get credit for with a CD, CDA are health, safety, nutrition, which is ECE 1020, and then um, foundations of early childhood, which is ECE 1001. The CDA, and this is a statewide answer, not just um, University of Cincinnati, can only be applied to those two associate level courses. They're called different things at um, different institutions, but they're the same courses. Uh, and so it is only ones that are at the associate level. And I think we answered the other ones. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So the most questions that we get um, regarding practicum is how does it actually work? Um, I'll start with the infant toddler practicum because it lays a foundation that's similar to the preschool practicum. As I mentioned, it's one semester and it's 10 hours a week. So it works out to be two hours a day. Um, in that one semester, the first seven weeks, you would be in an infant classroom for two hours a day, five days a week for seven weeks. So 10 hours a day for seven weeks. Then you would transition to the toddler class and you would spend two hours a day, five days a week in the toddler classroom for seven weeks. And that would complete the infant toddler practicum. As I mentioned earlier, the preschool practicum is two semesters long. The first semester operates very similar to what I just mentioned about the infant toddler practicum. It's 10 hours a week. So that works out to two hours a day. This one must be in the morning. Infant toddler can be any time of day. The preschool practicum must be in the morning. Uh, during the, the main hours when um, center time and circle time are happening. Then for the second semester of preschool practicum, it's 15 hours a week. So you will have to be in that classroom with the same group of children three hours a day, five days a week. 
again for the 15 weeks of the semester. The nature-based um, early learning is very similar to the infant toddler practicum, um, 10 hours a week for several weeks. Uh, the, um, it's interesting to note that the nature-based practicum currently is running in the summertime only, so that uh, if you're interested in this sub plan, you can find a summer camp, a nature preschool in the summertime, um, those kinds of programming that might be associated with a zoo or a museum, uh, it might be easier to find a place to complete practicum. Um, yes, if you um, would like to do your practicum where you work, your, your center or your type A or B home must be highly rated. In Ohio, we have a quality rating system called Step Up to Quality. And they have just uh, changed over in Ohio from a five-star rating system to a um, bronze, silver, and gold leveled system. So for a highly rated, um, to be allowed to, to do practicum at a center that's highly rated in Ohio, it is silver or gold. In other states, we uh, would go and look and see what the uh, quality rating system is in your state. And uh, we would look to see what your state is uh, considers highly rated. Can you get paid for doing practicum? The answer is yes here too, as long as you are already employed. If you are doing practicum at a place that you weren't already employed, they would not necessarily pay you. Um, this is a recent change in the last year. And uh, again, through lots of advocacy work, um, they have uh, realized that um, it's a hardship when you cannot be paid for the practicum time. So this is a new rule that Ohio has allowed and other states have followed as well. Does the practicum lead to the pro uh, professional teaching license? In Ohio, we only have one um, teaching license and it's called the Ohio Pre-K Associate License. You must complete that second practicum course in the preschool practicum that, that would lead you to that license. As a reminder, this entire degree will not prepare you to work in a pre-K to fifth grade setting that requires the pre-K to fifth grade license. Um, the, the highest that this license licenses you to work with is um, all the way up to kindergarten age. So birth to age five, uh, but this does not allow you to teach kindergarten or above. The greatest part of, of this program is that you have um, a practicum coordinator that will help you through all aspects of the practicum. When you are approaching practicum, which is typically at the end of your degree, whether it's your associate degree or bachelor degree, it's typically towards the very end. Um, the semester before you approach that uh, course, you will be put into a practicum preparation site where we will collect paperwork and we will approve the setting that you are working in. And there is a coordinator that will be working with you very closely at that time. I'm gonna pause again, Allison, to see if there's questions. Um, yes, as a student at Grand Canyon University heading into my next year or two of ECE classes, what does this mean for me? Um, so I'm not sure if, if you're maybe asking about how would it work to transfer in, um, but you would just follow a normal application process of being a transfer student. Um, you would, we'll kind of go over more details in a couple more slides, but um, you would fill out the, app, the normal application form and you would then request official transcripts from Grand Canyon or any other institutions that you've attended. Um, and then once you make your way through the process um, and if you were to receive an offer, confirm, you would eventually be set up with your academic advisor down the road and um, they would help you through the process of looking into for transfer credits. Um, and then another question about practicum, Kathleen, it says, how about the practicum for administration? So um, I mentioned earlier that there is no practicum for administration embedded in all of the courses that are in the administration sub plan. There are um, expectations that you will shadow another administrator and there's not an hourly requirement. Um, it is um, more assignment driven. And so uh, most of these can be met virtually, but I think there is benefit of going and seeing another administrator's site if possible. It's not a requirement though, because as Allison mentioned early on, this is an asynchronous course, meaning 
you do not have to be all in one place at one time. And so to um, have an expectation that you would be in another center to do that shadowing um, isn't in line with that. The practicum though, again, is uh, it's of, a, of your choosing for the preschool and infant toddler and nature-based, but the administration doesn't have a required practicum. And then um, another question from Mary, does the practic is this practicum for the associate's degree or both? That largely depends on um, your degree plan. So we often, I'll just make it as simple as I can right now. If you are coming in and do not have any other college credit and you start with your associate degree, that associate degree will likely end if you choose the preschool or infant toddler or nature-based subplan with that practicum. Then you decide to go on to your bachelor degree. In your bachelor degree, you can choose a different subplan. So let's say you chose preschool for your associate subplan. For your bachelor, you want to choose infant and toddler um, so that you truly will have uh, a transcript that reflects birth to age five. Uh, you will have that infant toddler practicum then in your bachelor degree. There are so many um, ways of organizing that those possibilities. I can't even begin in this webinar to talk about all the options. That's what having a dedicated advisor will help you with once you are accepted into the program. And uh, students change their minds sometimes too as they progress through the program. So um, uh, the easiest answer is once you apply and uh, we see what your goals are that would determine when your practicum would be. All right, and I think that was the most recent question. All right, so I would love to um, kind of hit the admission requirements with you all. Um, and I know there's already been a couple of questions about being a transfer student. Um, so we want to make sure that you sort of know the difference between what you fill out, because that will be one of the main questions when you fill out an application um, is, are you a first year student or are you a transfer student? Um, so the first year student is considered um, somebody coming in with no college experience at all, no previous college courses taken anywhere. Even if you were enrolled for a very short period of time, maybe you didn't get that many um, credits, um, that would not be considered for you. If you've never attended college before, this is your very first time applying and getting in, um, you would be considered a first year student. And what we need um, to be able to um, be accepted is just a completed high school diploma or GED. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're able to send us official high school transcripts they actually aren't sent from you, the student. Um, they need to be sent officially, um, to be considered official, they must be sent directly from the school, either through the postal service, um, a physical copy, or a lot of schools nowadays are able to be, be sent electronically and ordered through an electronic service. Um, and if you need help with any of that or finding a really good link um, or a website to order them from, that's where my team and I and the enrollment services advisors would be more than happy to help you find those. Um, so please don't email or fax transcripts because they won't be accepted. Um, you do not need to take any kind of test to get in. Um, and then um, right now for spring, our application fee is waived. So there won't be a fee if you are applying for spring. Um, now, the other side of that is, are you a transfer student? And what does that mean? Um, so if you are a transfer student, you did attend at least one other previous college or institution before. Um, but like I mentioned, um, even if you didn't finish it, even if you um, were only enrolled for very short and then discontinued your, your program, you will still be required to, um, to show documentation, which is those official transcripts. Um, so for our associate program, as long as we get those transcripts in, you will um, receive acceptance. But for the bachelor's, um, if applying to the bachelor's program, there is a 2.5 college GPA requirement. If you um, did take coursework at any other institution, uh, we are looking for that, at least that 2.5 or higher. And what you need for that um, is the exact same as the, um, almost the exact same as the associate program for first year. Um, you do not need to take a test for, that, for this either. Um, you will be able to complete the application online. Um, we will possibly need your high school transcripts, depending on how many um, credits you have already completed. Um, if you've completed under 24 um, credit hours, you will still need your high school transcripts. If you've completed 24 or more, 
Um, those high school transcripts will be waived and all we need are the officials from any previous college, colleges that you've attended. And if you have questions about that and you're not sure how many credits you've had, um, my team and I would be happy to help you with that as well. So for transfer students, a couple more um, details that we wanted to share with you guys. Um, you can earn transfer credits um, from a regionally accredited college. Like Kathleen mentioned, we are transfer friendly. We actually have articulation agreements with quite a few other schools where we will accept your credits coming in. Um, so for potential transfers for the associate program, you could possibly get up to 40 coming in. And then potential um, credits for the bachelor's, you could receive up to 90 credits coming in. Um, and then like Kathleen mentioned for the CDA credential, only for the associate can you receive up to six credit hours going in. And to, de to determine that, because that is a very popular question that we do receive, um, some people you know, are asking right off the bat about um, how many do you think I might get? Um, you must still first apply first. That's your very first step. You do need to apply to the program, make your way through the application process, get those transcripts um, submitted, reviewed by the admissions team. And then once you are admitted, um, one of the first people that you're going to connect with is not only your student success coordinator, but your academic advisor. And both of those people will help you um, fill out what you need to fill out to have admissions review your previous um, of official transcripts and let you know ultimately how many do you receive going in. So there's just a couple steps first that we need to make sure that you complete before you make your way to, to receiving that final answer about transfer credits. So like we mentioned, we do have articulation partnerships here at UC. Um, we have over 15 partnerships. And if you're not sure if your um, school is on one of those lists, we do have a list that we can share with you. It's actually provided on our website, I believe. Um, so students can be admitted to the bachelor's program coming from a partner institution, and you can be um, granted that automatic transfer of credit. Um, if you have you know, finished out those, those credits from one of our partnerships. All right, I see a couple of questions. If my completion date is November from Davis College, am I still able to apply for spring semester? Um, so spring semester does not start until, um, spring semester does not start until January. So as long as you get your application submitted before November 15th, with which we will talk about deadlines, um, and you're finished no, in November, since your new classes don't start until January, um, you should be still fine. You can actually complete your application ahead of time, and then we can get your, your official transcript sent in for where you are at Davis College. And then can we apply for the bachelor's right away if we have never taken any college courses? That's a very good question. Um, and we do get that quite a lot. And it does depend on the student and, and you know, ultimately what you would like to start off with. Um, but Kathleen, I'm sure you would, of course, agree with me that we do highly, highly recommend if you do not already have an associate degree, we highly recommend you starting in our associate program um, and then working your way into completing the bachelor's. And that's due to a couple of really great benefits you're getting from starting the associate. One of those is the associate degree scholarship that you're going to receive through UC. Um, and also the fact that you are getting the same exact courses and the same fa faculty that you would be getting anyways in the bachelor's. I know, Kathleen, you sort of mentioned before, starting in your associates is basically like completing the first two years of your bachelor's anyways. So why not get that added scholarship opportunity and help with your tuition costs? And Kathleen, if you want to chime in on that, because I know you have really great thoughts on that. I was just gonna give an example, Allison. Um, so the very first course, anyone coming into the program, if you have an associate degree already or not, you must take the course that I teach. It's called Learning ECE Online. It's ECE 1005. So again, it's a 1000 level course, but everyone is required to take it. Uh, so even if you are already have an associate degree, you still have to take that class. But if you've never had any associate degree courses, um, you're still having to take that course. And um, if you apply for the associate degree, of course, you're going to get those courses discounted. You don't have to actually apply to graduate with your associate degree if you don't want to. 
You just want to be able to apply for that degree program so that you get those courses discounted and you can roll right into the bachelor, uh, uh, the bachelor degree. We have students though that do like to celebrate their success in obtaining their associate degree. Sometimes that's the first time they come to campus to walk across the stage. And at graduation, they come and, and, and say hello to me and say, guess what, Kathleen? I'm starting right in the bachelor uh, program. Obviously at that point, they would not have to retake my course, my 1005 course, because they already took it as an associate degree student. But many of them do that. They go right into the bachelor degree program and um, so there's no reason not to uh, start in the associate degree, even if your ultimate goal is the bachelor degree. Right. All right, so um, some important dates to remember that are coming up, especially for our upcoming spring term. Um, so if you have not already applied, you will, um, to get in for spring, you will wanna get that application and all official transcripts must be in as well to be considered complete by November 15th. Um, and then um, if you receive your acceptance into the program, you will have up until December 15th. So right at one month to ultimately log back in and confirm your spot in the program so that we can get you ready to go and registered. And then your classes for spring will start January 13th. Um, I know some of you on here have already started your application. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes certain schools and their transcripts do take a lot longer than others. So if you have not yet requested your official transcripts um, and you do need help, please reach out to myself or my team. If you know your enrollment services advisor's name or email um, and ask them, how do I go about best getting those transcripts in so that we have plenty of time to get you in, by, um, get it approved by November 15th. Allison, I have a question I see uh, about needing the uh, high school transcript translated. Is there a specific translator agency that you see works with or that you could recommend? Um, yeah, we actually um, a lot of times have um, them translated um, by a uh, West supporter. The, the West um, program or, or the West evaluation program that you can do online is one of the popular ones that we that we use. If you know that you are going to have to get them translated into English, um, my team and I have specific um, sites and information we can share with you and the ones that are actually more, most cost of effective and cost friendly um, because we have looked up which ones make you know more more sense for our students and trying to help you with um, saving as much money as you can. So um, yeah, we do have all of that documentation and information that we can send through email um, and we'd be happy to send that over to you guys. All right, so financial aid, um, I know uh, Kathleen did touch on this before, but just to reiterate, both our associate and bachelor programs are eligible to receive financial aid. Um, and we do have a dedicated financial aid advisor who works with our online student population. Um, his name is Ron Jackson, and I have his email and his um, phone number saved that my team and I would be happy to, say, uh, to help with you. Um, he's happy to reach out via email or set up a phone call. Um, and then obviously you can just um, reach out to that general um, financial aid UC email address as well. Um, and then if you are wondering about our code or need more information about going, going ahead and filling out that FAFSA form, um, my team and I would be happy to send over all the steps that you need as well. But if you have specific questions, if you already filled it out and you're not sure um, about how to go about kind of interpreting it, like I mentioned, the best thing would be to reach out to our advisor, Ron, because he would be more than happy to help you and support you. So let's see, I applied to be a readmitted. How do I find out if I was admitted back to UC? Um, so your enrollment services advisor should be working with you and um, they are keeping track most likely of your form that you filled out to be a readmitted. Admissions does sometimes take um, about five to 10 business days to ultimately go through the review process and let you know as a readmit student, are you accepted or it, was it um, accepted by the college? Um, if you haven't received word of anything updated, I would definitely reach out to your enrollment services advisor and see if they do have updates for you. But I will say my team and I check daily and we look to see if anybody has moved through and um, become newly accepted as a readmit. Um, so we do get that several times throughout the week update. So we should be able to share with you exactly what stage you're in.
All right. And Shamel is up to talk more about our TEACH scholarship. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Shamel Hutchins. Back, well, Shamel Baxter now. I've had my last name for a month now. Um, we're just going to kind of go over the TEACH scholarship. I do see some of my scholars on here, so that's good. Um, so for the TEACH scholarship, we do the CDA assessment fee, associate's degree, um, and the bachelor's degree. This is a three-way partnership between the scholar, the, um, the employer, which is your center, and then Teach Ohio, of course. Um, there is eligibility for the scholarship. You must be, you must work at a center, um, an ODJFS licensed center. You must work 30 hours a week. You can also be a type B or type A. Um, you must 30 hours a week with the children. You must agree to commit to your program and stay with your center a minimum of one year after depleting a contract. Um, you must be at your center 90 days before you can apply. And you must not already have a degree um, for the associate's degree. In order to be in the bachelor's degree program, you must have an associate's degree in early childhood education. Um, the benefits of TEACH is TEACH provides the following. We pay 90% of tuition and fees. We pay 80% of book cost. We give you a $300 travel stipend, internet stipend per year, um, but that's automatically applied. Um, we reimburse your center up to $12 per hour um, for providing six hours of release time. And then we also give you a $300 bonus every year when you complete at least nine credit hours. Um, for your sponsoring center, they also, they pay 5% of your tuition. They must provide you six hours of release time. And then they have to grant you a $300 bonus or 2% raise once you have completed those nine credit hours a year. And then as the scholar, um, you are required to pay 5% of tuition and then commit to stay at your center um, for one year once the scholarship has ended. Um, we are currently doing a one-time laptop reimbursement up to $1,500. So if you're interested in that, you have to be on an active TEACH scholarship um, contract and we will reimburse you after your first semester once I receive your grades. Um, so the TEACH scholarship is designed for the scholar to go debt-free to college. So we pay 90%, you pay 5%, and then your center pays 5%. Jamel, I have a specific question. If a student has a bachelor degree in business, are would they qualify for the associate degree uh, with the TEACH scholarship? No, virtually not, because we would um, we just look at it as they wouldn't get as much financial aid as someone with trying to get one degree. So they wouldn't be able to use the TEACH scholarship. And then there's a follow-up question. If someone lives in Florida, can they use the Florida TEACH scholarship to go to UC? That's a question for Florida. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, the answer is usually no. And, yeah, um, that. yeah, they, they want to keep the funds within the state that it has been awarded the funds. So that uh, unfortunately, I have not heard of a, a a teach state that was willing, even in an online program, to cross state lines. Right. Um, and if that changes, uh, uh, you know, we can we can follow up on that. Um, and then is the TEACH application currently open? I don't know if that's on the next slide or not, Chanel. Yes, the TEACH application is currently open and we are accepting applications for spring 25. Um, in your OCRA profile, you just want to make sure that everything is complete. So you have an active employment role, your highest education is verified, and then that TEACH application should open up for you. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Shamel. Sorry, there's one more that came in that's very timely. Can financial aid and TEACH be combined together? Yes, so how it how the scholarship works is all your financial aid um, is applied first, so that's your pill and money that you don't have to pay back. And then what's ever left, TEACH will cover the rest so that you won't have to take out any loans or anything like that, not unless you need to or want to. And then another one that just came in, are there any programs available to help cover the cost of a computer up front? Uh, not that I'm aware of, 
but I know that the public library is a great place to start. Uh, they, you know, they, they oftentimes have many computers open and um, with a with a flash drive, you can do a lot of your work on the computer at the public library. A lot of students start off by doing a lot of their work at their childcare center where they're employed. So, uh, but I, uh, please, if anyone else has an idea of where you can get a, a grant or something for a computer upfront, please jump in. Another question, question yeah. to Shamel, can I reapply for the TEACH scholarship since I didn't use it when I applied for my CDA? Yes. Awesome. I pay straight tuition with no federal aid. Is there a maximum amount TEACH will pay? No, there's no maximum amount. Just um, your 5% and your center's 5% might be a little bit higher than someone who gets financial aid. So no, if you don't get financial aid, we'll pay the whole cost. Your 5% just might be higher than someone who gets it. What if someone has a degree from a an institution outside of the United States? Does that also prohibit them from getting the associate degree scholarship through TEACH? Um, so their associates, if they have an associates, it has to be an early childhood. So we have to verify it in the registry as an early childhood education degree. So the international ones can get a little tricky. So I would reach out to the registry. Sounds good. And someone in the call uh, offered up that uh, if you are looking for a computer, try PCs for People program for help getting a laptop. Thank you, Arian. Great information, yes. <laughs> All right. So I know I saw somebody ask about the link to the application, which is perfect because that was our next part to share. Um, so while you're thinking of maybe some more questions that you wanna ask us that we're gonna kind of um, open it up here in a couple minutes. Um, just one more reminder, if you are still planning to apply for spring and you haven't filled out your application yet or you're still working on those transcripts. Reminder that the deadline um, for the application is November 15th. Um, and then that link underneath it, that website I mean, is going to take you right to starting your application form. It's a very quick form. Um, basically just asks you personal background information. Are you a first year or a transfer student? Um, have you gone to other schools and which schools? Um, and then um, once you fill that out, of course, we're going to still need those official transcripts to come in for it to be considered um, ready for review. So we've come to the end. Um, if anybody has any other questions that they want to quickly put in the chat, um, we would be happy to address them if they have not already been covered. But also we wanted to share our um, information to contact us if you have specific questions for your enrollment services advisor. Um, you can definitely reach out to me or um, if you know their name and email or you're not sure, I can find the right person to match you up with. Um, and then I, I know Kathleen, you're always happy to talk to potential students as well um, if they have specific questions about maybe the curriculum or the practicum. Um, and then of course, Shamel is, is our rock star okra. Um, representative, she would be happy to answer teach questions as well. So while we're waiting for any other questions to come in, um, Allison, I'm sure you said this, but I was busy trying to check the chat. Uh, the application is free. So uh, you have nothing to lose uh, by applying and seeing how that um, application gets started. So uh, I know some of you are interested in seeing what your previous coursework would be equivalent to you always have to start with the application. And uh, thanks to the University of Cincinnati, they have waived the application fee for students in this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you um, haven't quite applied yet and you're not sure about it, um, like she said, there's nothing to lose. That for spring for the term, it has been waived. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, paying any extra costs to, to apply. That application form is just pretty much just a one one pager and it doesn't really take much time at all to fill that out. If you have other questions, feel free to 
do you need to pick a sub plan before you apply? It will ask you on the application which sub plan you're interested in. Um, but like Kathleen mentioned, our, our students do change their minds, which is totally fine. Um, so if you do anywhere throughout the process of applying or once you actually are even a confirmed student working on enrolling, if you decide to change your sub plan, your academic advisor would be happy to help you set that up. I see a great common question. Um, do you need physical books with the online program? Uh, the answer is uh, maybe. <laughs> um, when you order books from our bookstore, they will be shipped to you. And uh, oftentimes there is an option for a digital copy of the textbook. Um, in several of our courses, I'm very committed to keeping the cost of textbooks as low as possible. And so sometimes we have a textbook that is considered, um, the term is open source, meaning it's free and it's embedded in your actual course. Uh, that will be a digital copy as well. Um, there are a couple books though that students have reported to me that they're better if they are actually a hard copy. So some of it is your preference. Sometimes it's what's available in the course and sometimes it's what's most affordable to you. But all of them are um will be available when you sign up for the class. You will know exactly what the uh, requirements are for textbooks. And it's a direct link to the University of Cincinnati's bookstore. And so you can see what is expected. Um, we have a, another teach question. Um, I started a teach application and it says my FAFSA confirmation page. I've looked for it, but cannot find where to get it. Would you happen to know where can I find that? They usually send you an email, but you can also upload your SAR report that's on the financial website, website as well. And then can I finish my CDA and begin my associates at the same time? Using Teach, yes, you can. But you want to, uh, so financially, yes, you can with TEACH. If you are obtaining your CDA, you need to provide the actual CDA certificate to be awarded the six credit hours. So that's something you would want to tell your advisor immediately that you are still in process of earning your CDA so that you wouldn't take those two classes that you will get credit for. Uh, typically, those are two of the very first classes you take after you take the course that I teach. So uh, that's something you'll want to um, tell your advisor about. Uh, we do have a request to see um, the administration sub, sub plan slide, but I do know that we are up against the uh, seven o'clock time. So um, Allison, I'm gonna let you close it out. And then perhaps if someone wants to stay on, we can back up the slide for that. Yeah, and also remember too, that I did wanna remind everyone that if you miss any part of any a portion of tonight and you thought we talked about something that you wanted to hear again. Um, this is being recorded and it will be sent out and available on our website. So just know that um, this isn't going to disappear. You'll still have access to see our recorded um, session in, in the future as well. Um, so if we want to go ahead and um, end it for now, just remember that we are available to help answer any of your questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out to myself and my team. Um, if you already are further into the process and already a confirmed or um, offered student, um, remember that you do have a student success coordinator and academic advisor that are happy to help you as well. Um, so any, any questions that you have, we're very much happy and available to help you. I hope that everybody has a wonderful rest of their week and we hope to hear from you very soon. Have a great evening.